save the date for the Sony Xperia 1 Mark VI, or we hope so, anyway. So, there was an announcement put out by Sony. They're having a special Sony event on May the 17th, and that lines up with last year when the Sony Xperia 1 Mark V came out. So the Xperia 1 Mark V, it came out on May the 11th. That's when it was announced, special event. So, presumably, we're going to see the Sony Xperia 1 Mark VI on the 17th. And I'm pretty certain that's what's going to happen. Because we've already seen the leaked renders. We've seen a lot of stuff. There's been a lot of things leading up to this point where I believe that that's what we're going to see. And we might have a few surprises in store. We might not. From what we've seen so far, it looks like they're going to do away with the classic Xperia one design so it looks like it's going to be a little bit shorter and it's going to be a little bit wider like a more traditional smartphone instead of the thinner design that we have here that's all we really know we know it's still going to have a headphone jack almost certainly it's going to have an sd card slot it still has the shutter button on the outside so it's still going to keep a lot of the core dna whenever it comes to the sony xperia one mark five but yeah but, and it might have a 2K resolution. It looks like the 4K resolution is going to go away. And I, I liked it for cinematic stuff. I really enjoy the 21 by 9 aspect ratio. It looks like it's going to be about a 19 by 5 by 9, which is basically the same thing as the S24 Ultra and some other similar phones. So some people might be happy about that. Some people might be having a little bit wider screen. And I, I kind of have mixed feelings about it. I really like the ease and the use of the one-handedness because of the thinner, taller design that the Xperia 1 Mark V, the Mark IV, the previous ones had. But I get it. They can't exactly expect just the same niche people to buy it over and over. It needs some more mainstream appeal. And most people like having more screen real estate instead of the thinner design, which was great for 4K content. But when you talk about 4K content, it was one of those things where it wasn't always in 4K. The phone was 95% of the time in the 2K Quad HD Plus resolution and then if you watch 4K content or, or high-resolution pictures, then it would turn into 4K. So it was kind of not used all that often anyway. And if you didn't watch a lot of content on your phone, then it might be something you might never really notice too much anyway. So the trade-offs, I think, are minimal, but... I'm not too crazy about them changing to a fatter design. Also, they're kind of up in the air still whenever it comes to the cameras. Like, we've heard rumors that they might have three 48 megapixel cameras on the back with X more sensors, and that would be really cool. That would be like a really big thing, and I kind of hope we see that, but it would be interesting to see what happened with the continuous zoom that we have, because I love the continuous zoom on here. It's just like a regular zoom on a regular DSLR camera where you have that capability for a true zoom and that's mid-range band, which kind of escapes a little bit what most other phones are doing, because if you look at other phones, they'll have like a one times, a three times, and a five times, and instead, we had like the 3.5 to the 5.3, or something around that mark, I can't remember exactly off the top of my head, but it'll be interesting to see what happens. If we get the same old cameras, that'll also be interesting, because I think that Sony's going to double down, maybe have some AI stuff, but really, I think they're expected to delve more into more point and shoot photography. Now, I like that we have the full manual controls. That's one of the things everybody loves about the Sony's. You can go hands-on. It's basically like having a DSLR in your pocket on the go all the time. You have all the nice attachments. You've got the vlogging equipment. You've got the different apparatus you can use for gaming. There's a lot of great things that this phone does, but it would be nice to have a better auto mode, right? So we've got auto mode in here already. It did get better for the Sony Xperia 1 Mark V but still it lags behind some other phones. If you look at the Pixel, you look at the iPhone, you look at the S24 series, they typically take better point and shoot photos, but where the rubber meets the road and where you have the full controls to go in and control all these cameras and like 4K all the way around, uh, there's a lot of nice stuff, 4K 120. There are so many benefits to using this camera system and Sony, they're basically industry leader whenever it comes to the idea of sensors and what you can do with the Sony camera. So the flagship hardware that they make in the Xperia 1 series phones was always a great great way for them to demonstrate their camera prowess. So it'll be interesting to see what we get there. I'm sure it'll still be 5,000 milliamp battery, probably still have Gorilla Glass Victus 2. I hope that we keep this textured back. I really like the textured back they added on here. Really made for a nice appearance. Doesn't really pick up fingerprints. I would like to see a couple other things. We really need to see a longer commitment to software support, especially with the prices they offer. I'm hoping they drop the price maybe another $100. That'd be cool, $12.99. That would be on par with the S24 Ultra, but they've got to offer more software support. This two or three years of operating system updates 
just isn't it. It's like two operating system updates, three years of security patches, and for a $1,400 phone, that doesn't cut it, especially when you take a look at like the Pixel 8 series. They've got seven years of support now. You take a look at the S24 series. They've got seven years of support now. So I really feel like they need to bump it up to at least five. If they went to three years of operating system updates and five years of security patches, I would mostly be okay with that. That would be a good incremental step. I don't expect to see like five years. If they went to four years of operating system updates and five years of security patches, that would be huge. That would put them on par with what Samsung had last year with what OnePlus is continuing to do. And I think adds a lot more meaningful stability to the platform and what you can expect moving forward. Also, they've done a lot of great things with the software on here. I really love the stock experience, but they've been much better with coming up with these updates. We got Android 14 a lot faster than we thought we would with the Xperia 1 Mark 5. We also got a lot more timely security patches and updates. So Sony, I think, is trying to catch up in the software department. I think they're trying to make their phones more relevant. I think they're trying to commercialize them more and make them have more mainstream appeal. And we'll find out on May 17th. So I will mark it on the calendar. It's probably going to be an exclusive J uh, Japan event like it was in the past. What's probably going to happen is we'll have the Japan event, then we'll have a Japanese launch, and then they'll have an Asian launch, an uh, Asian European market, and then we'll get the U.S. launch. It's got to be faster. Like before, it was like, okay, we got the initial launch with Japan like in May, June, and then we got the U.S. launch. I think it was around August, late July, early August. And that's just too long. Like it's too long of a delay, especially when you want people to buy it because what happens is as you get closer to July and August, people are looking at the new Z Flip, the new Z Fold. They're waiting for the new iPhone. They're waiting for the new Pixel phone. So there's a lot of big launches that happen in the fall, and it just doesn't make any sense to have an announcement for a phone in May and then finally push it out to the Western world in July, August, September. And that was fast. That was much faster than we got it in previous years. So, yeah, I think it's pretty much a foregone conclusion. I'm pretty certain it's going to happen on May the 17th. I'm sure we'll probably see some more leaks and rumors and things like that before then. I'd really like to get some confirmation on the camera. I'd like to see some faster charging. And I would like to see expanded heat sink stuff to comp like help out with the heat a little bit more, which it has been very good with the Xperia 1 Mark 5 because of the Snapdragon 8 Generation 2. We can expect to see the Snapdragon 8 Generation 3, probably 12, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and I would really like to see facial recognition. It's not on here. Like, oddly enough, it's not on here. I don't care that much, but I really think to compete better with more mainstream flagships, it would be a more complete phone with it. I hope they keep the power button with the fingerprint sensor built in. I really appreciate that. I like it a lot. It's very easy. Just grab it, unlock it. So there's a lot of good things that they did really well with the Sony Xperia 1 Mark 5. And I can't wait for the Xperia 1 Mark 6. And hopefully I can get Sony to send me one early. They sent me one early this last year. And I was able to make a lot of content earlier before it even got to the U.S. So crossing my fingers, I've got a pretty good relationship with Sony now. So I'm hoping. But as of right now, I don't personally know anything. But I'm excited. Mark your calendar. May 17th, and let's see what happens at this special Sony event. So let me know what you're looking forward to. Are you looking forward to the Xperia 1 Mark 6? What are you looking forward to them updating? Do you think you might pick one up, and do you think that it has a chance if they make some of these changes against some of the other flagship phones? So that's all I've got. If you have any questions or comments, please go to the comment section. I'll do my best to get back with you. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like and the subscribe button and the little notification bell if you want updates when new videos come out. And as always, thanks for being here. I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you guys next time.